Hello there, and welcome to the Ford's Pro League. And we're off to round one, where it's Team Fortified versus Team Westwind. And ladies and gentlemen, it's looking like a spicy one, because here we have on the left-hand side, in the blue, it is Team Fortified. Finn and Ambrulo have chosen to select the Seep Commander. Seep Commander? It's the Missile Commander. Now, we've seen throughout the Forts Pro League a different set of uh, nuclear rush than we have seen in previous seasons. Uh, this time, we've seen a lot of nukes supplemented by laser weaponry. So we suspect we're going to see some fire beams and a plasma beam, maybe a standard fire beam plasma beam combo out of Ambrulo in the top fort. Whereas Finn in the lower fort is likely to be going with a swarm missile spam. Potentially double nuke. We'll see how this goes. And, well, they're going to be building those weapons and throwing them against their opponents. Against Team Westwind here on the right-hand side. Who looks to be going for the exact same strategy. Team Westwind, Malme, and Geiger are setting themselves up with the exact same strategy here. It's going to be somewhat of a mirror match, but with different commanders. So on the right hand side, they've chosen to go with the Warthog Commander. Now, Warthog doesn't give the same strength bonuses to swarm missiles as the Seep Commander does. Because Warthog is very simple. It just empowers your heavy weapons, makes them hit that much harder. So we're going to see Geiger in the upper forts on the right hand side in the red. Got to be wielding empowered laser beams to laser apart and burn through their opponents. The question is, who's going to come out on top? Because we're about to see the action start off here. As Swarm Missiles finish relatively early in the match. And they are nature's top tier predators. Of all things wind turbine. And wouldn't you know it, there are wind turbines on everyone's forts. And they're about to get blasted. Now, once we get these snipers completed, I imagine Finn's going to be launching over at Malm. And Malm immediately targeting Finn. Although, uh, targeting the lower element of it rather than... The turbines probably because Finn only has a single turbine so he may as well try to do some damage it's worth noting that uh, swarm missiles aren't notorious for their ability to break through wooden structure or structure in general of any kind uh, however if you hit enough places you hit them with enough swarms they will start to dig through just chip away one little swarm at a time uh, Malm as is customary loses a turbine to the swarm missile we do see the classic EMP dropped out. Uh, it's a little late for the, um, the, the EMP. I guess it's not that late. Uh, but it isn't uncommon to see the random EMP dropped out early because there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of uh, drawbacks. No op real opportunity cost as Finn loses the sniper duel. Now I'm with a tiny door coming up on, coming up on top. It is worth noting that the snipers tend to deal with the EMPs very, very well. So it's a little bit risky for the blue team here to be uh, to be wielding the EMP at this stage of the game. But so far they haven't been punished for us. And they've managed to land a couple of shots, which will delay their opponents just a little bit. We do see the right side missiles launched again, targeting the EMP position. But the EMP has just been sold off. And it's like, nope, we're not going to deal with that. Because the consequences of having the EMP shattered within your own base are, well, your entire base gets EMP'd. So you don't want to deal with that. Uh, so they're not dealing with that by selling it off. Oh, wow. Buzzsaw. Oh, no. Finn getting a little risky, a little greedy with their defenses here. Leaving themselves vulnerable to Buzzsaw Madness and uh, takes a hit on their core for it. The first fire beam has been fired, caught seamlessly with a sandbag. Looks like the red team has elected to go multiple fire beams rather than plasma opener. Not a surprise, given that the fire beam is the premium weapon for keeping your allied nuclear weaponry safe as they travel across the open air. Fire beam is, of course, also the top tier weapon for harassing the opponents while they are still constructing their own their own weaponry. Perfect for the timing attack kind of stuff. As the first nuke is launched. Right, weapon goes drunk. Solid hit. Direct to the weapons platform for the laser beams for the red side, red team here. Now, unfortunately for the blue team, uh, left hand side has lost all of their lasers. There's nothing to protect the weapons and nothing is to, uh, nothing available to 
follow up sh to follow up the uh, the nuke after it lands. Question is, who's gonna start doing the real damage? Because while team the left hand team is uh, got themselves some lovely nukes out in the air and ready to fire. Right hand team is a little bit l lacking in that department. While well, they're launching the nuke right now, they don't have the swarm to cover. It looks like they don't need it. Because Team Fortified here on the left has managed to, uh, managed to lose all of their anti-air. Not that they had much to begin with. And in doing so, lost all ability to defend against the nuke. So it flies uncontested across the sky, slaps the top of Finn's core, bringing it down to 55%. Whereas on the other hand, over here on the right hand side, in the red, we see the first plasma beam gearing up to fire. Missiles launched on all sides. Empowered nuke flies across immediately, making it seamlessly, dodging through all the anti-air courtesy of seep speed. We'll get to see who starts dealing the real damage. Now, this is one of those situations where I truly have no idea how this is going to go. Lacking a lot of map control, uh, the blue team here on the left is going to be uh, struggling to uh, going to be struggling to keep those missiles out of the sky, but. The reality is, the laser beams are just as deadly as the nuke. The difference is that the nuke can hit random places and do critical damage at the most wild of times, and that makes it wildly uncontrollable, inconsistent, and unpredictable, and unpredictable damage is devastating. Whereas the plasma beam, especially the fire beam plasma beam combo, can deal game ending damage at precise timing, and that usually means that players can defend against it even though it's a lot to handle. Nuke almost eradicating Red Team's forward most base's foundation. Uh, that's a bit much to handle, but they are alive for the moment and would desperately love to not have that happen again. But here we go. West Wind, right hand side, activates their commander ability. We have empowered nukes on the field. And ignited by the swarm missile for double empowerment, Finn takes massive damage. But there is no plasma beam follow-up, for it hit in a location where the plasma beam cannot, cannot follow through. Lasers unleashed on both sides, dealing with damage they can, taking out a few turbines on, on one side and just a hefty repair bill on the other side, taking out doors, but nothing that can't be replaced. Whereas on the other hand here, the missiles are launching again. Will the flak take out the nuke? Yes! With that, blue team survives. At least this time. But with a fire beam and a plasma beam out for both teams, uh, things are starting to look a little bit dangerous. The nukes, once they land, soften up the bases for the plasma beam to deal game ending amounts of damage. At least that's the plan. Let's see if that actually works out. As we see a bit of friendly fire, the anti air from the rear forts and the red team has managed to uh, accidentally dust to their teammates core, bringing it down to 77%. Here comes another launch. Empowered nuke flying across the sky. It's burned, ignited, massive damage. Team Fortified loses a player. Finn falls. The second plasma beam announcing its presence. Team Westwind deals some damage over to Team Fortified once again. Looks like Blue Team's at a, at a quite a substantial disadvantage. Now, I've said this and I say it again. Some weapons you never really... When some players have specific weapons, uh, you never really count them out. Lasers are one of those weapons. Not because lasers deal incredible damage, but because lasers are peak door sniping weapons. So at any point in time, Team 2 could lose some, if not all, of their critical components uh, just because their opponents have a laser and for no other reason. So it's not... Ambrulo isn't out of the game here, but 
Oh, okay, okay. Well, now that's just an unfortunate experience. Uh, as Team Fortified just lost their final plasma beam. And too many plasma beams hitting hitting the same location, and now Embrulo is, uh, is in a pretty rough spot. At this point, their objective, their path to victory includes getting a plasma beam and starting that door snipe to try to get it back, and all the while taking the fury of multiple warheads slamming straight into their foundation, uh, which is a bit of a rough experience, as we do see them selling off selling off a mine to get a little extra, little extra money here. Uh, interesting that they're getting a swarm missile of their own. While I don't blame them, I feel like that's going to be a risk that's hard to take. That does require them to uh, sell off substantial bits of their internal components here, which is not a great experience. I'm surprised to see there's no energy shield in front of this plasma, because if it gets hit by a fire beam again, uh, which is likely, um, or, you know, it, it gets burned by friendly fire, uh, which is also likely and has happened already, uh, and it's going to explode. Oh! Hey, speak of it and it shall come. Uh, there is that energy shield which will defend that plasma and keep it relatively safe during its during its construction period. Nuke ignited lands, deleting chunks of the wood. Oh, that's a lot of damage. The plasma burning clean through. Oh, no. That looks suspiciously like they ran out of energy at the last moments. Oh, it would have been a kill shot. And Brulo barely hanging on, barely standing. No stability tech to uh, to keep them intact should the foundations take another hit like that. Tech being sold off. This tech specifically being sold off means that there can be no more flak reconstruction. So once the anti-air is gone, it's gone for good. As here comes another nuke. Not empowered this time, but still doing great damage. Looks like Fortified's last remaining player is sacrificing their expansion, selling off what they can just to get money back because, well, <laughs> they're probably not going to be able to keep it for very long, given that it's out there and exposed and they don't have the money to keep it intact. Uh, but with this, now the Swarm Missiles... Oh no, the Swarm Missiles are coming. Swarm Missiles. Destroyers of all things energy. Massive damage. Uh, the new clans. It makes it across the sky, and with that, Ambrulo loses their plasma once again. And I think that's their... their... any real hope of comeback in this has just been vaporized, as there it is. Their defenses have been penetrated, there's not enough economy remaining, and this looks like it's about to be game over. It's just a matter of Team Westwind walking up, blasting through their front door, and knocking on the core. The plasma follow through? can do it. Alright, is it still on cooldown? It's still on cooldown. There. There it is. And just like that, Team Westwind wins round one in this best of three. And we're off to round two, where it's Team Westwind versus Team Fortify. The sides have been swapped, the commanders have been changed. As Team Westwind here on the left-hand side in the blue are playing as the Pinch Fist Commander. Pinch Fist Commander? Uh, quite popular for good reason. Well, it's, it's just the commander that lets them get through the early game with that much more speed. Looks like Team Westwind losing the sniper duel to their opponents over here on the right-hand side. Team Fortified in the red playing as the Eagle Eye Commander. Eagle Eye Commanders, I like the commander. It, it's fun. It gives some pen extra penetrative power and form of burst fire to all of their heavy weapons, which is a great time all around. We see the turbine being saved by a sandbag as the uh, snipers start to harass it. Unsurprisingly, we do see Pinch Fist players selling off components of their base to such an extreme degree that it is vulnerable to 
Uh, just about any kind of weapon that can bring it down, but especially buzz saws. A single buzz saw fully illuminates Melm at this point, and uh, doesn't actually slaughter uh, Geiger here, but that's um, probably going to change at some point. Uh, what is more interesting to me is that Team West Wind is going for the double swarm missile strategy. Uh, you don't often see this with Pinch Fist, although it's not a bad idea. But the nuke rush can be quite effective. Obviously, it won't have the same power as Warthog nukes or the speed as uh, Seep, but just the ability to get it out so consistently with Pinch Fist is quite top tier. And they'll have to do a lot of damage, as on the other side, Team Fortified has gone up to pretty much maximum economy and is going straight to heavy weapons tech. Especially with cannons involved, it's that they are particularly consistent at dealing damage. Means that Team Westwind's gonna have to deal devastating damage immediately within the next 120 seconds or so, or Team Fortified's gonna start uh, gonna start pulling ahead in the game. Double Swarm missile launch, targeting Foundation. Buzzsaw opens up the defenses for the Swarmers to flow through and take out a mine. That's actually non trivial damage at this stage of the game. Uh, that will start to slow down Fortified's roll here. At this stage, Team Fortified has been delayed to a point where they're not going to have their weapons out by cannon o'clock. Question is, how much more delay can they manage? Looks like the, the forwardmost fort here for Team Fortified on the right is going for howitzer play. Not a surprise in this context, although a bit ambitious as a standard cannon against especially a pinched fist team. Uh, is really all that's necessary to push them over the edge of the death spiral. Howitzers just does a lot of damage. Um, very good at winding down the game in a very swift pattern. Very swift raid. Swarm missiles targeting turbines. We should see... Yes, Finn has been completely cleared out of all the energy production. First fire beam is placed for Team Fortified. That's going to be a good start. We can at least slow things down, but one thing about fire beams, while they may burn they may burn all the swarm missiles out of the sky, they only serve to empower the nukes by igniting them and turn them into incendiary warheads, which is not generally what you want to have to deal with. Uh, so you got to be careful with that. Uh, the fire beams in this matchup are more often used as an anti-anti-air or anti-sniper solution. Uh, generally picking out other weapons and such. Something like hunting turbines is a great use of them. Mind you, we do see an energy shield placed for Team Westwind, so that won't be happening in this round specifically. Swarm missiles once again hunting turbines. But the nuke lands, and that brings Finn down to 35%. Team Fortified takes a heavy hit there. While not much in the repair cost, it does bring their forward Morse fort down to 35%, which is not a lot of percent remaining. Uh, so that's that's a lot of damage. Uh, Team Fortified is going to have to do a bit more fortification and actually contest the nukes, because if another shot like that happens, well, they'll be down a player, and that's not the condition you want to be in. Uh, we do see the player who was developing a howitzer build is just not even trying anymore. Uh, they're focusing full on on defense while their teammate tries to get anti-air and to change this game up as the nuke flies, lands, impacts on a specifically designed catcher for the nuke, so not much damage was dealt, although that's not exactly a cheap repair bill. Energy shield goes up for Embrulo. That will uh, put Team Fortified in a better position to defend their, to defend their energy production. A shotgun from Westwind. Left hand side doing what they can to negate the anti-air. Another heavy hit with a nuke. That's gonna... the repair bill. Yeah, there it is. A second nuke lands. Uh, Team Fortified is struggling to maintain here. While the red team has managed to uh, not die. That's only just barely. Westwind hasn't done game ending amounts of damage yet, but they've full halted their opponent's ability to expand and it's while yes team fortified has a stronger economy they haven't been able to defend efficiently enough to make use of that economy 
It's just a constant drain and a constant slow chipping away of their defenses to a point where there's not much they can do but fight back with what they have, hoping to stabilize. And so far, there's not a lot of stability to be found. Whereas on the other side, Team Westwind is slowly teching up, slowly expanding. We see upgraded mines kicking in, we see additional energy production, we see the new weaponry being placed, even mini gunners and upgraded upgraded machine gunners mixed in as well. The EMP flying across shuts down some of the weapon production for Team Fortified. Um, Team Westwind is just very slowly ramping up the pressure, whereas Team Fortified is struggling to do anything but take it. <laughs> Look at that turbine just out there and exposed to uncontested. Uh, it's a bit of an unpleasant experience for their opponents to have to handle. But handle it, they are trying. The forwardmost base for Team Fortified is just completely out of money, whereas the rear base does have a bit more play to work with. Oh boy, weakness detected. The forwardmost base of Team Fortified has got a, uh, a foundational problem. I am surprised to see Team Westwind hasn't launched their weapons at a moment. This will give... That'll have relieved their, the pressure off of their opponents for long enough for them to actually retort with a fire beam, but... No, that's just gonna make them mad. Multiple missiles of many flavors flying across the sky. Another nuke lands once again. <laughs> Poor Finn. Finn, the forwardmost player for the fortified team over here on the red side. Um... Getting hit a lot. Hasn't been able to do much other than just take damage. Uh, which is not a great experience, but they are at least doing what they can to survive. And survive they have. Looks like we do have laser technology just about finished over here for Team Westwind. They're teching up to get even more stuff. Which is generally how you want to go, you know, when you're ahead, may as well get further ahead. Swarm missiles flying, anti-air dying, but nothing critical lost. It looks like Team Fortified is actually able to stabilize here, uh, mostly due to Team Westwind's reduced aggression as they work on teching up and generally moving on from the nukes. While they still have the missile weaponry and are still occasionally using them uh, for a scrap here or there, it is more important to point out the next, the first heavy weapon is in production. This means that Team Fortified while having gone for a heavy weapons build themselves, will not be the first to reach heavy weapons, as they've simply gotten blasted nearly to the Dark Ages. The real question is, will this howitzer for Team Fortified make the difference? So remember when I said that uh, Pinch Fist builds, they, um, they're kind of flimsy? You only really need a standard cannon to make them crumble? Well, that's more than a standard cannon. That's a whole howitzer. And while the Pinch Fist players have had a moment to defend themselves, they haven't focused on their defenses. In fact, they've been sacrificing their defenses in exchange to get more weaponry. So this howitzer could deal incredibly devastating damage. Uh, the question is whether or not they will get to do so. Because while the howitzer exists and is a threat, and Team Westburn doesn't know about it, uh, it also still has to make it across the sky, and there's some substantial amount of anti-air over on the blue team. That's gonna make it a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. This howitzer, while a surprise, will not be free, and that's the issue. Because if it doesn't make it across, then um, Team Fortified's in a rough spot, because they have nothing else. So they're banking in everything on making this howitzer land, and making it deal game-changing amounts of damage. Oh. Nuke gets EMP'd and goes off to uh, the infinity. Looks like we have more machine guns placed here. They'll serve as anti-air, and honestly, they're probably getting them there to uh, rebuild the, mach the, uh, the mini-gunner positions. As the howitzer is present, this is going to be the best time and case to use the Eagle Eye passive. This will allow them to double shot this howitzer, use one howitzer platform to fire two howitzers worth of howitzer, which is a, uh, a good strategy, very effective, can deal game-ending amounts of damage, and they're 
that's that is their hope right now. Team Fortified is riding on this. Will it work? They kinda they kinda need it to work or they're gonna get eliminated here in this best of three. Oh boy. There it goes. It flies. The NCR doesn't react. They're just not expecting it. And that's it. The double shot howitzer is enough. Catching their opponents by surprise, it deals lethal amounts of damage. And just like that, Geiger on the blue team falls. They fall in a way that leaves not much behind. The nuke and the swarm missile are here, but they can't be used for so long as they're, they have that trunk connected. So those are immediately being sold off and used to fund additional goodies. Plasma Beam finally comes out for Team Westwind, but... At this point, one plasma beam is a little rough. Uh, Team Fortified just has more firepower on the field at the moment in the form of a fire beam and a howitzer. And, well, the howitzer itself is devastatingly destructive. So they need to do something a little more than that. The nukes, while cool, have not made it across the field in quite some time. As the howitzer is being ready to fire again. Looks like it's all prepared to do its double shot, so we're about to see another attempt at eradicating Team Westwind. Pre-firing the... Pre-firing the flak, hoping to try to catch that nuke as it launches, but the nuke was not launched. It was it was bait the whole time, it was just a swarm missile. Uh, none of the swarm missiles make it across the sky, so there it is. Howitzer flies. Second howitzer. That's it. Perfectly done. Team Fortified wins round two. And we're off to the third and final round between Team Fortified and Team Westwind. Here we have it on the left-hand side. In the blue, it is once again Team Fortified, playing as the Pinch Fist Commander in this mirror match. They're going to be playing fast, they're going to be playing loose, they're going to be playing spindly and skeletalized as they sell off their internal components and just about everything else to race ahead of their opponents who are doing the exact same thing. So we will get to see how these builds diverge as time goes on. Um, I am curious if we're going to see the portal nuke strategy, which has been quite popular recently. It's worth noting that we do see a little bit heavier investment into your economy on the west wind side of the world. Whereas on the other side, it's just cannons. And by cannons, I mean these are probably going to be howitzers, because howitzers on this map are of the meta. We'll see how this goes. Looks like we've got at least one laser player coming out of Team Westwind. Remember guys, to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that follow button, and leave a comment down below on who you think is going to win. Because, we, because coming up at the end of this week, this coming Saturday, is the finals of the Forts Pro League, where you will get to see these two teams facing off once again to claim their place in the top three of the Forts Pro League finals. It's I'm so excited. We've seen some amazing teams, some amazing games throughout the open season, and well, in the playoffs themselves has been even better games, so don't miss it, and I'll see you guys there. Oh, good lord. This base looks like it's about to fall off the... just cleave itself off the off the terrain 
welcome to welcome to pinch fist happens every single time um but yes, unsurprising, we do see a howitzer play from West Wind over here with the laser support. And over here, it's, it's going to be howitzers. It's, it's always howitzers. And the question is, what are you going for? Is it standard cannons? Looks suspiciously howitzer-like, but probably standard cannons. Buzzsaw is coming out. That was a 20 mil. Why are you... Okay, well... They got a 20 mil out there. Uh, it didn't last very long. Uh, also going for a 20 mil over here. I don't know what strategy you're going to be using the 20 mils for. Is it just 20? I mean, they're not the worst thing on this map. Um, at ranges, at these ranges, we don't see a whole lot of downsized 20 mils. Other than they're just being easier to defend by virtue of them um, being completely negated by energy shields. But... They do more damage than standard cannons, especially at these ranges, uh, the relatively close range. So it's really not that unusual to see them here. Uh, the weird part is that uh, they're not building howitzers. Typically, this top base uses howitzers because, frankly, in this position, howitzers are just kind of overwhelmingly powerful. Now, for similar reasons, I'm not surprised to see lasers. Because lasers can just come from below and deal incredible penetrative power. Especially with that fire beam at the perfect timing attack. Because you can catch your opponent's weapons while they're in construction. And <laughs> pretty much end the game. Especially if you get that chain reaction up into the core. Uh, which probably won't be happening this time because they pinch fist rushed out those 20s. The 20s are actually finishing a little bit faster than these 20, uh, than these fire beams. Mostly owing to Team West Wind's uh, development of technology early on. I'm oh, sorry, development of economy early on. And in a twist of fate, those 20 mils perfectly synced actually blow through the, me the uh, inadequate defenses of their opponents and take out a fire beam. That's usually the opposite of how that. It usually goes the other way. Uh, typically, it's the fire beam taking out the 20s. But here we have it. Going up to 520 mils for Team Fortified, they're just going to spam out lead in every direction, especially the direction of their opponents, and wear them down until there's nothing left. Uh, which is how that typically goes when you're using 20. Well, typically when you're using 20, someone builds energy shields and they don't, they don't do much anymore. But uh, When they work, they work by blowing apart their opponents with massive amounts of projectiles, which is what we're seeing here. I mean, look at all the shots flying. That's just a lot of damage, though I am a little surprised to see them targeting uh, the lower forts in particular, because it's further apart. If you guys may have noticed, this plasma beam was fully, fully busted open. There were no defenses in front of it, despite it having chunky defenses. And it lived. It lived an entire... It lived and survived through an entire volley of 20 mil. Uh, just because 20 mils are imprecise to a point where they don't hit anything in particular. Uh, so... That's why the um, the range is kind of a big deal, because if you get a short range target, the spread on them is less, and they focus their fire more, and then they don't do things like completely whiff the base with the half of their shots. So, uh, generally speaking, you want to shoot the closer range target, but uh, unsurprisingly, the lower target here was the higher priority due to it being a bit weaker on the defensive side. So, I'm a little surprised to see them not shooting top base, but also bottom base was more vulnerable, so, I mean, I guess why not? It's, it's, there's no substantial... I, I don't have a strong opinion here. Fire beam, plasma beam, trying to go straight to the core. Uh, punches through with the fire beam, but doesn't... Plasma beam can't... doesn't quite get through. How it's her fires. I'm surprised to see them going straight to the core rather than... At the uh, foundation node, typically you aim for this node here because it does, aside from doing massive deformation, um, if that node shatters or is sufficiently weakened, then the entire fort comes flying off its hinges. As there's the burn, we see the fire beam doing its work, actually taking out all of the weapons here in this position owing to that uh, chain reaction effect. Plasma Beam trying to door snipe doesn't quite make it. Tiny doors doing tiny door things. Standard cannon follow up for Geiger. 
Uh, Geiger on the right hand side in the red. The howitzer player will be able to follow through their own howitzer. Howitzer fires straight to the core and cannon follow up also straight to the core. Blowing off a large chunk of the base but fortified was very well fortified and prepared to take that kind of damage. Firebeam touches the core once again burning it down leaving it at a whopping 42%, the perfect number, as we have what is a surprisingly even match for all things considered. We have weapons for both teams. We have, uh, well, there's the howitzer. Weapons for both teams, damage been dealt for both teams. I, at this stage of the game, I would give Team Westwind a little bit of an advantage. Not so much that I expect them to win at this stage. Howitzer lands, dealing a lot of damage as the 20 mils splash across the entirety of West Wind's lowermost base. EMP is flying, but hitting nothing, for there is nothing to hit. This is a scary sight to see, and more importantly, that cannon did massive damage. Finn losing all of their, uh, uh, just shy of all of their minds as the laser's trying to take them once again. Laser cannon just does so much damage. That is going to set Team Westwind at some substantial advantage here. Um, just loss of those mines is, even for that small amount of time, is huge. Especially having to repay to reconstruct them all. That's, um, that's crippling. It sets, it's gonna set back Team Fortified like a solid minute. As, oh, hey, there it is. There's the howitzer for Team, uh, for Team Fortified. They're finally getting that up and running. Uh, that howitzer could make all the difference. As it would seem, Team Westwind has not developed a whole lot of anti-air, and I don't blame them, for Team Fortified has not built anything which would require that. A door snipe, plasma beam, plasma laser, doing plasma laser things, takes out a pair of 20 mils, that's going to set back Team Fortified a bit, as well as do some damage to all their internals, bringing the lowermost fort down to 78%. The howitzer flies once more, cannon follow up. Oh, near game ending amounts of damage. Top fort getting overpenned by the cannon shell, dealing. Uh, surprisingly little damage, all things considered. Uh, losing the most critical struts, but it wasn't quite enough to rip it off of its foundations. Which is a surprise. Uh, usually, usually when that strut goes, the entire fort goes with it, but uh, probably owing to, probably owing to uh, their lack of the rest of their fort due to um, cannon fire, um, there wasn't enough weight to bring it all the way down to the floor. And another cannon follow-up. Can do it. No, he just takes it this time. Takes it straight to the front. Not even penetrated. Well, looks like Team Fortify is gonna get themselves a gonna get themselves a howitzer shot here. They're gonna get to return fire. Now I strongly suspect that this howitzer uh, won't well. That was more damage than I gave than I was thinking. Uh, Team Westwind loses all of their laser weapons, uh, which is not a great experience for them. Uh, so that means that Team Fortified is officially higher in the uh, potential damage output than Team Westwind. Once Fortified was uh, getting put back into a corner and beaten, uh, they were, uh, they're now ahead. Now it's, sir, it makes it across again. Massive damage. Oh, that base is so close to coming crumbling down. Standard cannon takes out three more mines. Oh, no. Poor Team Fortified. They're getting... Oh, it's not... This is just a mess everywhere. Every team still has weapons. Every team is still doing great damage. And every team is struggling and suffering to some substantial degree. I mean, look at the deformation over here. It's crazy. There's an example of those energy shields uh, disabling or at least mitigating the entirety of that uh, 20 mil round. As once again, cannon fires. It does damage as cannons tend to do. Howitzer flies once again. It is actually intercepted by the machine gunners. 
sniper anti-air taking out that uh taking out that emp just sniping the rocket out of the sky you see a second standard cannon coming out for the west wind's uppermost fort that right, will be some another source of consistent damage <laughs> poor finn the blue team lower base is still trying to rebuild their minds it's it's been a rough time oh internal combustion oh wow that's that's unfortunate fortified's uppermost player self detonated their howitzer projectile inside their base and uh, immediately their opponents capitalized on it by sending them an entirely new howitzer shell which also did massive damage uh that's gonna set them back a little bit if they had a bank of money um, it, they don't have it anymore because they just had to repay they just had to rebuild a vast majority of their defenses in fact they still haven't managed to do that um, as they're eating more and more howitzer shells that's how you get put in a death spiral by the way uh, having to pay for repairs that you don't have the money for and then in, in the time it takes you to get that money back you have to pay for even more repairs because your opponent sent you more cannon shaped presents um, yeah that's that's rough. The deformation is a little bit rough as well. Uh, Team Fortified having to sell off components of their base just to fix things. Looks like we get some howitzer on howitzer violence. Just trying to use the projectile defensively to stop additional damage incoming. Just to try to keep themselves out of the death spiral. Swimming, swimming as hard as they can against the current. Uh, for the moment, looks like they're going to stabilize. But it's, it's, it's a bit rough out there for them. Cannons flying across the, the air, going both directions, 20 mils and standard alike. Howitzer defended. Surprising amount of howitzer defenses here. Ooh, that was almost a door snipe. But not quite. Splashes onto the door. The small door is coming in clutch in that moment. Okay. It looks like things were stabilized here again, which is a surprise to me, all things considered. I would think someone would have gotten critical game-ending amounts of damage in any of these shots, most of which could present it as that. The 20 mils, trying. Uh, don't even take out a machine gunner, which is unfortunate for them, but you know what? Machine gunner loves to live another day. Howitzers fly both sides, and... Impact! I don't even think that... Oh, 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 oh. I was about to say, I don't even think the howitzer damage impressed upon uh, Red Team's lower fort is quite as much damage as the standard cannon managed to land on the other side. God, just Ambrulo in the top fort. The fortified has just taken... Team fortified has taken so much damage in that position. It's so very close to just collapsing. Look at the red blinking struts. Everything is failing to repair. They don't have the money to keep up this kind of, uh, to keep things going at this pace. It's the, it's not even filled in. Howitzer caught by the howitzer catcher. Uh, no substantial damage dealt with that round. Standard cannons flying, but at this point, that is a beach worth of sand. Those sandbags defending the cannons against the cannon shells and the howitzers alike. Another heavy hit. Sniper follow through. The scary part for Team Fortified here is that their opponents, Team Westwind, have managed to fully upgrade their minds, or at least for one of the players. That means that Team Westwind will slowly pull ahead here in the economic advantage. And where there's economic advantage, there is inevitably damage advantage. And that's going to um, grind against Team Fortified and wear them down. So while they may have enough defenses to hold the line, and enough aggressive potential, enough cannons to reply with all the damage of their opponents, uh, that's only for the moment. Unless something changes here, uh, Team Fortified is slowly going to get edged out of this game. As we see, a plasma beam taken out. 
That's a good way to start that, because all the money that uh, Team Westwind had just gathered, at least uh, relative to their opponents, getting ahead in the cash fund has just been uh, partially wasted. By wasted, I mean blown up by cannon fire. Which is a little bit unfortunate, uh, for Westwind specifically. Buzzsaws digging through defenses as the howitzer looks like they're re-aiming heading toward the core at this point. Doesn't quite touch it even though it gets close. Team Fortified investing their money in additional firepower which is a premium option. Looks like Team Fortified's going up to a third howitzer which is a lot of howitzer for a team. Uh, We've seen matches where three howitzers happen, and it's usually it's usually the last thing they need to get. Uh, unless Team Westwind has an incredible amount of map control, three howitzers are generally going to land. And when they land, they will deal four eradicating amounts of damage. Like you can't you can't land you can't eat three howitzers to the face and be okay on any vanilla map. That's just it's way too much damage. Uh, mind you, three howitzers alone typically don't land all three shots. So if, maybe if it's just two howitzers, they could make it, but you guys saw last round what the power of two howitzers is. Uh, it's very powerful. <laughs> Literally game any amounts of damage, and that's what makes three howitzers so good, because the first howitzer baits the anti-air, the team, their opponents will burn pretty much all their anti-air to take it out of the sky. And then there's just two more howitzers that fly over and uh, deal game ending amounts of damage. You'll love to see it. Whereas Team Westwind is relying more on these standard cannons, the consistency of them, to get massive damage dealt. And massive damage they are dealing. So many. All right, we officially have three howitzers completed for Team Fortified. Will it be enough? Or will Team Westwind's cannons come on, come deal game-ending amounts of damage? Which can happen pretty much at any time. I mean, like, look how close this thing is to falling. Howitzer shell one, howitzer shell two. Oh, it's a lot, but it's not enough. It's not enough to break. The anti-air is gone. It's not quite gone, as a minigunner comes out and defends that third shot. Malm just barely surviving. Team Westwind barely holding on after that massive volley. But what's this on the other side? Team Fortified hasn't rebuilt, and the cannons are flying. Is that it? And there it is. Team Fortified loses a player. And with the player goes down one of those howitzers. Team Westwind, with their standard cannon play, consistency is king. Burns down their opponents, don't have enough money to repair, and suddenly it's over. And Brulo falls, leaving Finn alone against the combined firepower of Team Westwind. However, uh, Finn still has double howitzer and double 20 mil and uh, another standard cannon on the way like that's that's five cannon emplacements so this is uh that is absolutely f just endless destruction amounts of firepower available to them all they have to do is get the damage to land on their opponents which they have been able to do oh Oh, yeah. Do you have a, any follow? Oh, 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 no. Not even the 20s are off cooldown. Oh, it's so close. Malm down to 43%, taking double howitzer straight to the face. Team Fortified is on a clock. While they have the firepower to break their opponents, as evidenced by just now, 
Uh, what they don't have is the time. Eventually, the economic advantage will wear down their will wear down Team Fortified's ability to uh, to stay in the game. And those cannons are coming. And Team Fortified is going. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Team Westwind wins this best of three. And you guys can get to see them play once again coming up this weekend at the Forts Pro League Finals show matches. So make sure to stop on by and I'll see you guys there.